I would like to thank uh, Texas Heart Institute and uh, Dr. Stephanie Coulter for this kind invitation. The title of my talk is uh, Intersectionality and in Patients We Treat with regards to uh, cardiac and aortic disease. And I would like to applaud the entire planning committee for this great uh, program. This is my disclosures. So why intersectionality uh, is important? With intersectionality, we consider all factors attribute to a patient in combination rather than considering each factor in uh, isolation. And uh, is important in healthcare, has been applied in health system research, and the aim is to understand and respond to health uh, inequalities. The main benefits are support equity analysis. Importantly, draw attention to the drivers of inequality and also leads to more focus interventions and policies. This is from Center, UCL Center for uh, Gender and Global Health in London. And we can see the relationship between gender and health and well-being and we do know that the gender can uh, interact with other social determinants of inequality, such as uh, poverty, occupation, geography, uh, and uh, participation, as well as uh, education. When there is gender inequality, this can have direct negative effects on health and well-being. So this talk is going to concentrate on um, intersectionality in clinical medicine and specifically in workforce of vascular surgery and cardiothoracic surgery and how this can affect the patient care. We can see here regarding the workforce in vascular surgery a recent report where women and black trainees were underrepresented in vascular surgery as compared with their representation in medical school. And also furthermore, in cardiothoracic surgery, this is um, led by uh, Jackie Olive, one of our um, studies, where we uh, examine the landscape of cardiothoracic surgeon and residents at the United States. And we can see, as others also have shown, Ortemeyer and other colleagues, that women and racial and ethnic and minorities are underrepresented among trainees and faculty in academic cardiothoracic surgery compared with surgery and medicine overall. Now, of course, the question is, can this intersectionality in the workforce can affect our patients or the way that we treat our patients? And even though we do treat diverse patient population, there is a little focus on ensuring that therapies are developed and tested in both men and women. Men and women manifest diseases differently, metabolize drugs differently, and have different outcomes following medical and surgical therapies. This is from our recent work led by um, uh, and uh, very well conducted by uh, one of our um, uh, students who is currently um, a surgical resident in Miami, Andre Cricinellis, where we look into um, clinicaltrials.gov. This is a public website where we look over a 20 year period cardiovascular clinical trials pertinent to coronary artery bypass, heart valve disease, aneurysms, ventricular assist devices, and heart transplantation in over 230,000 patients. And we wanted to analyze the female patients and racial and ethnic minorities representation in these trials. So this is what we found. This is the sex distribution by disease or procedure we can see a male of a representation across all the diseases, coronary artery bypass, transplant, valvular heart disease, as well as uh, aneurysm. The same over representation exists when we see the sex distribution 
by funding source, with the blue being uh, the male uh, patients uh, participated in the cardiovascular clinical trials uh, for a coronary artery bypass as well as for transplant and uh, mechanical uh, ventricular assist uh, devices. Uh, this slide here is a little um, concerning and the reason is because it shows that uh, even though there is a persistent male representation by time period, both for coronary artery bypass and uh, transplant and ventricular assist device, uh, there is a continuous underrepresentation for female patients and this participation haven't really changed or in certain instances became worse. Uh, and this is the, um, the sex distribution for, uh, by time period for the valvular heart disease and maybe this is the only time uh, where the, um, the distribution was um, similar uh, between both sexes. When we look at the racial and ethnic distribution, we also saw the same uh, similar ECMO uh, healthcare disparities and uh, distribution for both transplant and uh, assist devices as well as the coronary artery um, uh, bypass. This is another study led by uh, Dr. Uh, Jessica Mayer. He was one of our uh, trainees and uh, she's currently a vascular uh, uh, trainee in University of Pittsburgh and uh, with uh, Dr. Chong and where they look at common vascular disease and uh, women participation in trials. Uh, this study look, uh, was shorter, was over a 12 year period but what we found was that participation of women in the U.S. trials for common vascular diseases remain low and has not improved over time since 2008. Now, after we look at the patients and how the patients participated in clinical trials and why this is important is important because Clinical trials are where the devices are getting tested and also clinical trials are the ones where the guidelines are based on. We wanted to see what is a gender representation among principal investigators, among the, pay, among the physicians who lead these trials and we concentrated in a subset on the cardiac surgery trials. And what we found was we looked around uh, 128 institutions more than a thousand uh, adult uh, cardiac surgeons and we found with no surprise uh, that um, f uh, all that that was a, con a persistent over a presentation of male cardiothoracic surgeons for trials funded by industry and no NIH funded trials had any female cardiothoracic surgeon as principal investigator. In addition, we compare uh, female and male cardiothoracic surgeons being at the same level of seniority, meaning associate professors and uh, professors, both male and female um, cardiothoracic surgeons. And we found disproportionately more men than women to be principal investigators in these trials. Why this is important? Because you can see that in a way this is a reflection to how we have the same male overrepresentation as patients in various trials and how when these trials are getting funding we see the uh, same um, uh, results. It's very important to ensure that therapies are developed and tested in both men and women and understanding sex related differences in patients with cardiovascular disease would have important implications for preoperative assessment, counseling, and outcomes. You can see here a recent study where they look at uh, large uh, coronary artery bypass trials among 13,000 patients. It's important to see that only uh, 2,700 were females. Females had worse outcomes than males in the first five years after coronary artery bypass, not related to um, technique. And also in another study, even though the results were getting better, still there is some um, considerable burden of postoperative morbidity, which was high among women. 
Regarding the aortic disease, we look um, in our own patients, patients who had uh, thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysm uh, repair, and uh, we wanted to see if the outcomes were um, any different. And even though we found similar outcomes, the important uh, message was that uh, were specific perioperative factors and predictors of poor outcome. The same, we look at um, the sex differences in the proximal aorta in a propensity match comparison. And uh, what also we found was that even though long term the survival was similar, were certain preoperative characteristics and presentation which were different between men and women and led to poor outcomes. This is why precision medicine is important because there is a focus intervention and we have a patient-directed counseling, assessment and guidance which can be extremely important. So in conclusion, intersectionality is a useful framework to make the cardiovascular medicine environment more attentive to the complex identities of patients and clinicians. It provides a useful starting point to address some of the challenges that arise in clinical context. And importantly, it acknowledges how these differences shape the patient-physician interaction and forces a reframing that can lead to improve outcomes. I would like to thank you for this kind invitation. It is a great privilege to present this important work. And again, I would like to applaud the entire faculty as well as Dr. Calder for this excellent uh, symposium. Thank you.